at the LVX by Maris. This, this is LVX by Maris, and this is the most daunting thing we've covered on this channel. Uh, Maris, as I'm sure you're aware if you've clicked on this video, is a phenomenal effects designer uh, out, of, out of California. They have built a handful of my favorite devices across my years of playing guitar. The Mercury 7 will probably always hold the record for the longest time being a singularly favorite reverb of mine. The Polymoon is an incredible take on rack delay, and the Enzo, I like to find an entire genre of my own playing around one mode on the Enzo. It has such a deep uh, place of affinity and affection in my heart. Uh, Maris makes great stuff. They also make pretty esoteric stuff uh, and have kind of constrained themselves within the format they've been using over the years, the kind of smaller uh, footprint. And this year, they blew that up. The LVX is kind of a culmination of the things that Maris has been working on over the years. Uh, this is more than just a delay pedal, but it's also more versatile than just like a soundscape generator. Uh, this thing has components of other Maris pedals inside of it. You have pieces of the Enzo and the Auto Bit and the Polymoon inside of this thing. Uh, you can create giant washy reverbs. You can create skittery uh, multi-tap delays. You can create straightforward bucket brigade rock and roll mono delays. You can do so many things with this. And also you can create giant otherworldly alien orchestral soundscapes. So there's 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 some throw here. I've actually been putting off finishing this video. I started it a couple of weeks ago, wrote that intro song that you just heard, and then just started spinning my wheels on how do you talk about a pedal like this in one video? I mean, this video is already gonna be horrifically long. I, I apologize. But having just finished all the sound samples for this video, I still feel like you would need another two hours to adequately cover everything this thing can do. It is deeply intricate. You can make so many things inside of this. And that's kind of the beauty and the struggle with a device like the LVX is it can do so much, but it's kind of on you to, to learn how to do it and to do it yourself. It's it's less a microcosm, more a Zoya. It is not often I find myself reaching for a manual for a device these days. I feel like I've spent so much time over the last several years developing a pedal-centric skill set, being able to quickly dial up the sound I want, the sound in my head, with the tools on my pedal board, that I often find that manuals are a last resort for me. And this was one where I found myself reading the manual pretty constantly. Uh, there is, it's not that this thing is inaccessible. I actually find it to be incredibly user friendly. Uh, pro tip, if you are like me, uh, you can turn off the graphical interface and instead use a text-based version of their menu system, which I found to be wildly helpful. I generally like the way that their graphical interface operates, but for me, I'm, I'm a simple man. I just I just want lists of parameters. I just want to like scroll through and clearly see exactly where everything is. I want all of my information available to me as often as possible. And the graphical interface, which can be changed in the global configuration on this thing, I found to be incredibly useful. But even with that, I found myself kind of like getting all of my basics together by reading the manual a couple of times. But then from there, and this is the, the beauty of this thing, it just kind of becomes about exploration. It becomes, it becomes a game of what is the thing that you're trying to accomplish and how do you build tools that will get you there? Do you want a lo-fi orchestral sound? Great news. The cassette modulation, the swell control, a low-pass filter, and 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 a and and like a smeared out version of the polymoon delay will get you pretty close. It will it will create something very interesting there. Uh, do you want a straightforward tape delay? It's in here. It's it's to it's it's maybe underselling the pedal, but it's it's absolutely in here. Which isn't to say that this is the end all be all for big box delays, soundscapes, or that it isn't without its flaws. There are limitations to this device. The ability to only use one mode of filtering at a time. Uh, something like this, I find myself going like, I would actually really prefer to be able to kind of grab a low pass filter, apply it here, uh, grab a parametric filter and apply it there, that kind of thing. But such is the limitations of this device, which 
feels kind of nonsensical to complain about. Um, there's also some kind of interesting redundancy things. There will be like a stock amount of modulation on a delay line, but then four other places you can apply modulation in different ways, uh, which can be incredibly useful, but also can kind of feel like you're spinning your wheels a little bit in terms of the tools available to you. Again, for the more ambitious programmers of this device, that kind of thing is gonna come in incredibly, incredibly handy. Um, but there is a fair startup cost per patch. Every single blank patch in this thing starts as a stock quarter note digital delay, very straightforward. Uh, if you wanna build that tape delay, you've and you want it to sound kind of like the way that an idealized version of your tape delay is going to sound, you're gonna to wanna to do the thing where you select the delay structure you want, you grab that magnetic tape, you then go over to your preamp, you pick the right preamp, whether you want a transistor-based base preamp, a tube-based preamp, or an op-amp preamp, you put it in the right location, you get those parameters set just so. Uh, if you want a specific type of modulation, you switch over to that, you grab it, you assign it where you need it to be, so on and so forth. Uh, as a studio tool, amazing. As a live tool, if you are a MIDI-reliant person who is not making on-the-fly changes in a live environment, this thing is rock solid. Uh, for me, I make parameter changes live and it makes this a little bit more difficult to work through, um, specifically for a live environment. And some little quality of life things, like you can apply a separate uh, tap tempo subdivision to your left and right delay channels on this thing, but there's no way to gang them together. So if I want to be able to control the subdivisions of, if I want my left and right channels to both be just a straight up dotted eighth delay so that it feels like a center focused kind of cohesive dotted eighth thing, I have to apply, but, but sometimes I want it to be a quarter note, I have to apply both of these customizable buttons to the two subdivisions and change each of them for the left and right channels specifically. I can't just gang them together, which would be a nice, like I said, live use quality of life thing. There's some little things like that that I would love to see in future updates from Maris. Uh, ways to kind of, like I said, simplify the workflow for a live setting. Maybe even ways to just like pull up a preset set of parameters. If I know I want a tape delay, I want to be able to pull up a configured tape delay rather than having to build every single piece of it from scratch. Again, I think that in the question of who is this for, we're looking at soundscaping, uh, exploratory artists, often in the studio or often with a very finished and kind of pre-planned rig for whatever performance or recording scenario they're in. And for that kind of thing, this thing gives you pretty unparalleled access. Uh, I see a lot of comparisons with this to things like the microcosm, which is not an unfair comparison to make, both in terms of scope and kind of core audience. The interesting thing is I would say that they kind of approach from very from two very different places. The microcosm has ready-made effects that you don't ultimately have that much control over. You can't really fine-tune the effect past the way that it kind of like is presented to you. On the other side, you have this where you have to do all of that fine tuning yourself. There's a, there's, a, there's a startup cost there. It is what it is. And for some people, this is going to be a godsend. And for others, it's going to be uh, a lot more work than you maybe want to invest. I think that's important to kind of be really honest and transparent and upfront about. Uh, this, is, this is not a cheap piece of gear. This is not an inexpensive investment into your sound, your signal flow, your workspace, whatever it is that you're doing. If you're looking for something like an L cap with bells and whistles, this is, gonna, uh, this is not going to give you the ease of use that you're hoping for, perhaps. Uh, but if you've got something like a microcosm and you're knocking your head against the wall, trying to figure out how to get more out of it, if you've got an idea in your head of something really ambitious that you want to create, in a pedal format, not going into the modular world, not working in VSTs in your DAW, uh, this thing will do a shocking amount, especially as you get into the more kind of customized programmability side of this thing. You move past the pages of modules and move into your, your LFOs, your, uh, your, your, your envelope, your attack envelopes, your, your, what is it, 16 step sequencer in this thing that can be applied to anything and assigned its own subdivision. There are a lot 
of things you can do with this thing. There is more than we were able to touch on in this video, uh, and this video is already too long. So I hope that what we cover kind of moving forward in this video is helpful in a way. If you're minded similar to the way I am in terms of approaching effects, you will kind of see the level to which I was able to wade into this in the couple of months that I've had it. Uh, I wouldn't consider myself to be an expert on this by any stretch of the imagination, but I'm at a point of what I would consider to be relative competency in being able to program sounds in this thing. And I would say that uh, for studio use, for sound design, for I really need a specific thing, this is kind of an except, except no substitutes piece of gear. Um, will I take it to a live environment? I have before and I have made it through it. I don't know that it would be my go-to, but when it comes to esoteric ambient soundscaping, uh, this is a superpower. So let's get to that, that those, uh, those pedal board sound, sound samples right now. And uh, let's just kind of really, really dig in and see what the LVX is really bringing to the table. So as always, before we jump into the LVX itself, let's talk through our signal chain and the context we are working in. I am playing my Jennings Navigator with Lambertone Cremas pickups into the Bondi FX 2026 compressor, the Benson Germanium Boost, the Origin FX MEQ driver, and the 1981 Inventions DRV. From there, we go to a Gen Loss into the LVX, which is in stereo, to the Big Sky and the Ruby 63, which is basically an AC30 style top boost amplifier. Uh, our kind of basic signal chain we're going to be running for the vast majority of this is going to be the germanium boost, the MEQ driver, and the Ruby for kind of our base level uh, kind of clean tone. And that's going to sound like this. So I don't want this video to be, you know, seven hours long. So we're going to try and kind of be as economical as, as we can be with our time here. Uh, the way we're going to do that is we're going to pull up a blank preset pa uh, patch on this thing, uh, which all sound exactly the same at the outset. And we're going to kind of like walk through the different modules you have access to, kind of explore the functionality at kind of a higher level without digging in too much to the... Uh, the really complicated stuff, the, the step sequencers, the sample and hold, the LFOs, all that stuff. Uh, but from there, we will then jump to some of the presets I am using and some of the presets I have made, how those came to be and the ways in which I am using some of those higher concept elements in those patches. And then we'll round things out with a take with a look at the looper built into this pedal. So let's uh, let's start off with one of our blank patches. So you jump on here and it's going to be a very standard digital delay. It sounds exactly like. Every single patch is this kind of like base level, super clean uh, digital delay. You have access to kind of your basic parameters around the outside here. Your feedback, your time, your modulation amount. I mean, it sounds good off the bat, which is really impressive. And then uh, you also have these two kind of center buttons here that are always assigned to something. And right now they are assigned to basically the structure of your delay and the type, basically giving you a quick jumping off point to go, okay, I have a blank patch, but I want it to be like a an analog delay. Or a tape delay. or that uh, digital delay, as well as different structures. So you've got, the structures are basically uh, your voicing of your delay and the type of delay you have. You've got structure, which is gonna be, um, or standard structure, which is going to be your very baseline, uh, two delay lines in parallel with one another. You have a multi-tap. 
we'll slow that down so you can hear what's happening a little bit more. It's a bunch of taps and you can kind of play with the volume and location of all of them, which is really cool. You have a multi-filter where each delay tap has its own filtering applied to it. Which can be really cool in full wet. And again, we haven't even like opened up the menu for real. You have your poly, which is going to be basically the uh, poly moon, uh, kind of but stripped down. But the version of the poly moon in this thing is shockingly robust. And we'll get into that. You have a reverse. And then you have series. Where left and right feed into each other. And then back to back to standard. So let's dive into the menu and kind of take a look at what you can actually do with even just that first like layer of picking your delays. You jump into delay and all of a sudden now you have your structure up here. You have your type of delay here. By the way, this is uh, as you go around this menu, it assign it, it is uh, in line with these controls, and this is going to be your kind of master navigation. So you have that uh, that ability to choose between those different modes of delay, the type of delay you want: magnetic, bucket brigade, and digital. Uh, you have your time. You have subdivisions for each your left and your right. Uh, I wish that you could you could gang them together, but you can't, as far as I'm aware, which is frustrating. But uh, a relatively small inconvenience, uh, and then your feedback. But if you pay attention here, you'll see that while we're in standard right now, you have two pages in this delay mode. So if, if in standard delay, we go over, we have our cross feed, which is how much the left and right delay lines interact with, the, with one another, and you have your modulation rate. But if you jump to something like the poly mode, you'll see all of a sudden we now have three pages, and that's because you have that that poly that poly moon sound and if you jump over to that second page you have your modulation amount and then you have your dimension which is going to be the amount that it smears You have your number of uh, taps. Let's take that dimension back down so we can hear them nice and clearly. You got your single. You got your two. And onward up to six taps. And then you'll see up here we have, uh, you've got your level and then you've got your, uh, your modulation applied to left and right, which is a separate modulation than this, which is going to basically be one of these submenu controls in the polymoon that allows you to do some really, really interesting, uh, I don't know what the method is, that, that it's, it's basically pitch modulation, but applied very precisely. So you've got, uh, you've, you've, got, you've got the option of, whoops, there we go. You have the option of none. So on both pages, we could take that completely off. And now you have a nice clean. Or you can do some really interesting stuff like medium and shallow. Fast and shallow. And then you start getting into some kind of uh, almost, uh, almost bit, cr not bit crushy, um, What's the word I'm looking for? And then you can get into some really, really aggressive stuff. Like I said, um, that's very in line with the submenu controls on the polymoon. Very like severe frequency modulations, but it can also be uh, quantized.
jump over to that other page and apply a similar uh, fifths and octaves on one side, octaves up and down on the other. But then you can do stuff like bring in that dimension control. But again, let's not lose, tr lose uh, track of the fact that we can go back to that delay and then make the jump from that digital to like an analog delay. So we can take that polymoon sound and apply that bucket brigade warmth to it. Okay, let's stay on track here. We'll, we'll circle back to some of the really, really crazy stuff. Let's get back to that kind of like nice, easy, slow, low, shallow. Yeah, let's jump back to standard because that's going to give us the most kind of Let's jump over to this dynamics page. Okay, so this is where things get interesting because from here on out, basically every page of modules, every page of effects that can be applied to your signal represents a wide selection of options that can also then be placed almost anywhere in the signal chain that you would want it to be. So on dynamics, you have a compressor, a swell, a diffusion, and a limiter. Uh, and each of those, so let's start with, let's take the swell, for example, because uh, I like the swell. Down here, you've got location. So you've got everywhere from before your dry signal all the way to post the final like output of your wet signal. So typically, you'd have a lot of things will be applied to kind of pre your delay line. And so if, you, if I play, you hear that delay swell in now, and I can set the speed of the attack over here. But I can take that and apply it to my dry signal as well. Let's just say we jump over to that diffusion instead you hear kind of like reducing the density on our signal uh, and low passing a little bit. So we, let's move that to something like the feedback loop. Or pre. Or post. You can hear like mildly different characteristics across those different things. But as we get into some of our pitch effects and stuff, that location within the effects loop, within the wet signal, is going to be really crucial. Like I said, you've also got like a compressor that you can literally put on your dry signal and use this as a compressor if you are so inclined. Let's reduce that gain a little bit. We don't need a ton of makeup. Let's go with a super aggressive ratio. Let's go... 40 to 1. Fast attack. And a really, really crazy low threshold. Yeah. You can really hear it like squashing down that, that, that guitar signal. Uh, let's jump out really quick and bring our mix down a little bit. I mean, that's a pretty good compressor, honestly. Like, if we get out of there. But 
But again, you could apply that to within your effects loop if you wanted compressor. Let's put it in the loop. Let's bring that gain down. That gain increase is going to cause it to like feed back into our effects loop a lot more aggressively, as you can hear. Uh, because obviously the way that a delay uh, works is by looping the signal back on itself at an interval uh, that either increases or decreases in volume with every single repeat. So if you gain that compressor up too much, you're going to get runaway oscillation. But you could in turn prevent it from being able to actually like blow out your speakers by turning it into like a really aggressive limiter and setting that threshold low enough. Whoops, wrong, wrong button. Uh, feedback loop, that's what I wanted. Set that threshold nice and low and then go. Like that's never gonna run away past that sound because it's at a 40 one to one ratio. But if we bring that ratio way down, it will run away on us. Okay, let's bring that gain. up that threshold to be something a little bit more acceptable. So each each hit of that compressor or each hit of that delay is going to get more compressed because it's feeding back into its own loop. But we could also change that and have it just ahead of the signal. So we're getting nice compressed but static repeats. Or we could put it post. And that way, when you get that build up over time, it gets stuck at a ceiling because we have, uh, because it's all feeding into a compressor as opposed to coming out of a compressor. Again, no compression. Compression. Then you've got the swell, you've got diffusion, and you've got a limiter, which is essentially what I was just doing, uh, but with fewer steps. Let's jump to our preamp. So this is gonna give you the ability to voice your either dry signal or your repeats uh, to kind of imbue a little bit more perceived honesty into the delay is how I'm going to phrase that. Uh, basically, you have access to a volume pedal control, a tube, uh, a, like a tube preamp, transistor-based preamp, an op amp, a bit crusher, and, and a drive. And again, th those can all be applied anywhere. So like, say we're, let's jump back to our, our delay. Let's say we want ourselves that magnetic delay. We want that tape delay sound. So we've got that, that tape delay sound. It's a little bit, a little bit wimpy. Let's put a tube preamp in front of it. So uh, right ahead of the actual delay unit itself. You can have like a transistor. Uh, the op amp is really nice as well. Let's bring up our, our repeats for our mix. And let's take our modulation all the way down. Like I said, you've also got like a drive in here, which you can already hear is a little bit like gritty. And this is one that's got a second page, including that level control. We could take that and put it right at the outset. So let's turn off our other drives right now. That's our, that's our very, very clean tone. Did you need 
need a drive, an overdrive in your uh, incredibly intricate uh, semi-modular delay engine. Maybe not, but like now you do. Let's take that gain down a little bit. Okay, so what's the actual use for this? So this is something that you might be inclined to take that gain really, really low. And then put it into your, something like your feedback loop. With way less level. Like, like, like we discussed, uh, when you have something in the feedback loop, you have to be careful about your volume, otherwise you will get runaway oscillation. But you can hear it really start to fall apart as time goes on. And a bit crusher, because of course we do. This is, we're gonna get ahead of ourselves slightly, I apologize, filter. We have a ladder filter, which is a great low pass. Let's put that on that preamp as well. And now we can very carefully dial up the amount of low pass we want with that bit crusher. which is incredibly useful. Anyways, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Yeah, those are your preamps. Uh, they all sound cool. Most of them sound similar-ish to my ear, but that's probably because I am unqualified. Uh, let's jump over to those filters as we were just talking about. So you're gonna have your ladder, your state variable, your comb filter, and your parametric filter, which is gonna give you a lot of, I mean, you get you get a lot of filter control on this thing, which is really great. I almost exclusively live in that low pass ladder filter because I love me a good. You can get nice and resonant with it if you want. But I like super low resonance. But again, you can also put that like in your feedback loop with some resonance. Let's bring in our other, our other drives that we had. You also have a state variable. Let's jump back to that pre so you can really hear it clearly. So again, you've got your low pass, your band pass,
and your high pass. You got comb filtering. So something like comb filtering, there's a spread control up here, which uh, kind of picks and chooses where in your stereo mix it's going to be applied. You can get some really weird effects out of that, which is really cool. And then parametric. And now instead of that, you have the gain control up here. So this is great for being able to essentially carve out or accentuate wanted or unwanted frequencies. So if I wanted, I could gain up. Or I go, ooh, that's like a kind of a trouble spot. That, that specific spot sounds nasal. So now we can gain that down. Create a little bit of clarity in the signal, which is really great. Okay, this next page is where things start to get really kind of big. Let's go to pre and dry. So we have pitch control on this thing. We have a few different ways of pitch, of applying pitch here. And this is the best pitch uh, that Maris has ever implemented. This tracks better than the Enzo or the Polychrome, or the, sorry, the, uh, the Polymoon or the Hydra, in my opinion. Like you can, you can play chords, like actual chords, and this thing will track with you, which is really nice. And you can do that with like a fifth or whatever, which is really cool. And again, this is one of those things where as you get into things like pitch, that's where you really start to go, okay, let's jump back, let's grab that ladder, let's grab that low pass. And soften up our high end a little bit. So that's the polychromatic, tracks really well across chords, which is really wonderful. Then you have your harmony. So let's jump to our correct key, which is, as always on this channel, apparently, uh, D. Let's do a seventh below and a fifth above. go two octaves down and yeah and two octaves down why not that seems like that seems like fun oh one of those is up oh will it not let me do that there it is
Yeah, it's pretty cool. Tracks well. Let's go back to that major scale. That will track with chords, but as you get a little bit more intricate, it's a little bit wonky, so just be aware of that. Then you have your microtone, your kind of like microtonal changes. It's basically just a more nuanced version, of course, in my opinion, but. And then uh, monochromatic. which does have some cool additional stuff. So we can go full wet, introduce a little bit of that glide. It's really cool. And then there is a lo-fi. Yep, those are your pitch controls. And then you have your modulation, of course. So we've got a bunch of great options in here. You have your, obviously your chorus. Your speed and your depth. As always, it is better subtler in my opinion. You have a flanger, which of course you have your feedback control. You have a dynamic flanger. There's 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 value there. I don't I don't know what it is, but I know it exists. But again, the nice thing about that is you've got your, you got your down, your both, your up for your flanging. Yeah, that's not my jam. But then we get into cassette, which is going to be your lo-fi stuff because there's some really good lo-fi functionality in this thing. So this is one that I like to kind of start super subtle, take everything to the bottom, bring all those highs back in, make sure that we have all of our, all of our lows. Mm and then start to introduce everything. So this is no slip, no crinkle, no static. So that slip gets really aggressive, but keep it nice and subtle. Bring in a little bit of crinkle. And then if you want that static, just a touch of it, which again, this is another one of those, balance it out with that low pass filter and things get really cool. And then of course you can kind of or get old timey radio with it by bringing down those lows. Or 
turn it into like a broken chorus. And of course, you also have your your barber pole. Uh, kind of like a through zero flanger kind of thing. It's the modulation found in the polymoon, and I love it. You have a granulizer. It does the thing, you know. You can keep it nice and mono. Or get it really, really kind of crazy wide. Bigger chunks. And you can have it moving backwards. Let's bring those repeats down to kind of balance out the size that we picked out. So this kind of thing can be great in like the feedback loop. And then you have a ring mod. Yeah, you know, it does the thing. But nice at low, it becomes a really cool tremolo. effects loop again. And those are our core modules. From there, you have your uh, your kind of like overall mix, as well as your dry and wet trims, which can be handy if you need to kind of offset some of the chaos you've created elsewhere in terms of overall volume across these different parameters and everything. And then we jump into looper location, including your ability to kind of set what these two switches in the looper mode do. Uh, and then we get into our modifiers, which we will uh, talk about in just a second. Uh, the modifier pages are long and, ex and exhausting, so are the globals and the uh, expression controls. So let's instead uh, jump to some of my presets that I've made uh, and, and kind of showcase how I utilized some of those additional things. So this is one of the presets I made for this part of the video. Uh, in an attempt to find ways to kind of like effectively highlight some of the uh, additional controls offered in this thing, especially as you get into these uh, into these modifier pages, I decided to try to rebuild a kind of stereo version of the shallow water with some additional kind of craziness going on in it. So, uh, first of all, this is what it sounds like. Here's without, and then my kind of like imitation of the shallow water via the LVX. So yeah, there, there it is. Uh, you can also obviously increase the time and the feedback and, and keep that delay in there. But let's listen to it as I originally created it, and let's let's look at how this came to be. Okay, so diving in, what we have going on here is going to be 
the bucket brigade delay, short time, standard, uh, the poly structure meant to essentially obfuscate the delay as much as possible because I wanted to, re I wanted it to really kind of co at its core feel like that shallow water. <laughs> In earnest, we could probably just take the uh, the mix to zero on that. Yeah, let's just leave it like that for now. Um, and then you dive in. We have our, we can skip over our delay because it doesn't exist. We have diffusion applied to the delay to kind of further reduce the impact of the delay in this particular patch because that's not what we set out to do. But we have no preamp. Uh, the filter is, and this is where things get interesting. So the filter is actually what we are controlling here. So this is the low pass filter applied before our dry signal. No pitch. Uh, we have that modulation to give it a little bit of a lo-fi vibe. Because uh, if you take that out, it's a little boring, a little too clean. So what we have instead is that... Ah, I broke it. I broke it by, by changing it. Let's take that static almost to zero. Let's take it out. Get all of our lows back in because I love the lows in this. Other way. Uh, so what we did though is we go to our modifiers you have on page three you have your envelope controls and so we have our min max of what the envelope can be how fast it onsets and how fast it, re it releases the shape of the onset and the release and where it goes and so basically if i turn this way up that will take way longer to open so let's get it to like a, a second and a half And simultaneously, I could also have it take forever to close. Including letting it stay open forever until I stop playing. But I, I, like, I like kind of forcing it back shut a little bit. Let's sh oh, uh, shorten that opening time. Uh, and so that and so that is then applying to the low pass filter itself, the actual frequency of the low pass filter. So if we change that assignment to like the resonance, it wouldn't do it anymore. But because we're applying it to the actual low pass filter, it's opening that low pass filter in time with our like according to our playing dynamics, which I think is it's 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 a version of volume swelling that I find to be so much more interesting than a standard volume swell. I think that that opening up of a filter is a much more interesting way to approach that. And then beyond that, we also have our step sequencer, which is applied to the static control in our modulation, but I like it as applied to the crinkle. Because then you get a little bit of movement in that as well. It kind of creates a little bit more of that, that sense of randomization. So that's kind of how I built that shallow, the shallow water-esque patch. Which can sound really great with like, you know, some wet effects around it. Let's crank the mix on that on that big sky. But not to be content with that, what I ended up doing was building what I call shallower, which is that same concept, but instead it does this.
So what's different here? Well, what we've done here is kept that same method for opening the filter, but we are dealing with the poly structure as a tape delay. We're actually utilizing the delay in this version. But let's actually, let's do this really quick. Let's jump over to that modifier and remove the assignment of the actual like low pass filter. So let's take that to whatever. We'll just, we'll put it on loop level so that it's not affecting anything. So this is how this patch sounds without the dynamic processing happening. So what we have is a quarter note subdivision and a half note subdivision on each side. A lot of crossfeed happening. Modulation in that poly, uh, in that poly moon delay structure. Uh, we are utilizing diffusion. We are applying it uh, before the delay itself to kind of additionally soften that thing up. We have a fair amount of dimension applied so that you're not hearing a ton of individual delay taps. It sounds very reverberant. It sounds like we have a reverb going even though we do not. Uh, we have that diffusion. We, we have the tube preamp, again, pre, just to give it a little bit more volume, a little bit more kind of body because I felt like I was losing kind of a, a little bit of presence through the whole process. So that keeps those delays feeling very vibrant and strong in the background. We have that low pass filter like we talked about. Uh, we are using the polychroma, uh, so just an octave down, just so that we can take those big, uh, kind of like more complex chords and not lose our tracking. We're using chorus because it sounds wonderful. Uh, we could, in this situation, also do that that cassette thing. Where's our cassette? There we are. Uh, take that static all the way out. A little bit of slip, some crinkle. Keep our highs in. Definitely keep our lows in. Mm -hmm. Maybe introduce a little bit of static. Uh, we have our, our dry and our wet trim cranked because, like I said, through the processing, I, I felt like I was losing some overall output from this patch, and I really wanted to kind of keep it all, all like active and, and, and present. But now, let's jump back to our modifiers, that envelope attack, and reassign that to our, our filter frequency. Sky and the gen loss on this board, and for this patch, we just straight up do not need them, which is really cool. We're gonna save this patch because I like the changes we've made to it. So let's take a look at some of the other patches we've put together. Uh, when I originally got the LVX, my first inclination was to see how well I could utilize it as a actual, like just straight up delay pedal in like a, like a live playing context. And so I made a variety of kind of more straightforward. And 
there's some great stuff in there. This is a really good, like, dual digital delay. Really great. Uh, some, like, broken tape delays. So this, of course, is going to be that cassette, because I love that cassette, but applied to the uh, delay itself, not our dry signal like I am often one to do. So this is straight up, I'm using it as a kind of like dual engine effects pedal. Uh, we have a chorus applied to our dry signal, which is then feeding an analog delay. I mean, right there between that and the big sky, I'm, you're, those three things, you're, you're instantly like good to go. Uh, kind of more of a straightforward. This one I put together uh, just for like, like it would apply an analog delay for when you need. Yeah, just a, it's nice to have that. Because like if you're gonna if you're gonna get something this robust, you need it to be able to do both things: the esoteric thing and the normal thing, which is great, and it does that. Similarly, you have like a nice straightforward tape delay. Okay, now these are interesting. So this is a patch I pulled from uh, from Maris on uh, whatever the website is. I'll link it down below. Um, it's like the patch storage website. Uh, and this is this this patch. which is really, really cool. Uh, so what we got going on here, let's just, let's walk through it together. Uh, this is the poly structure with a digital delay, with a good amount of feedback, a lot of cross feed. Some of the stuff is, is things that I changed about it as well. Um, the dynamics is going to be that swell applied to your dry signal to give it that kind of violin crescendo-y kind of thing. We are using the drive to create a lot of that grit, but only in the delay, not on the pre, like, not on the actual like dry signal. The uh, we're using a comb filter, which allows you to kind of like really take away the timbre of the electric guitar. So like if we do away with that, it suddenly sounds like this. If you go back to comb filtering. Here, let's jump over to it again. Here's where the, the actual like, settings were.
you have that harmony pitch. It's in the it's in the key I want it to be, and that's assigned to out here, so you can kind of see what your scale is and what key you're in. And then we have glide turned off, but honestly, glide should probably be on for this. I think that might be cooler. Yes, that is way better with glide. I regret everything I've done with this patch so far. That's awesome. And then that lo-fi thing. And yeah, that's that patch. But what I did was I took, let's save that really quick. I took that and I applied it to this guy, which is basically the same thing with some low pass changes, some filter changes. And instead we are doing an octave down instead. And I, I love how menacing this one gets. I love that. I think it just does such an amazing job of creating really kind of big, ominous sounds in a way that I really, really connect with. So like I said, I've got a handful of patches I've created, but there's some really great other stuff. So let's just kind of quickly walk through some highlights of the, uh, of kind of the like stock factory sounds in here, because I think there's some good ones. This is a great example of one that I would immediately start modifying. So it does that kind of regenerative pitch up thing that I'm not always super crazy about. Where kind of you hear it kind of stepping up octaves as it goes. But once you kind of have the tools available, you just go in, you go to filter. You grab that, if you're me, you grab that ladder filter like you always do. Turn down that resonance like you always do. Apply it to the feedback loop. Figure out where the annoying octaves start to sound. And just kind of tamper it a little bit. I like that a lot more than I like the other version. Maybe I just hate treble. Maybe that's what we're learning today. Oh, this one's kind of fun. This is one of those ones that like, if you get a, if you get a poly moon or an LVX, these are the ones that you kind of want to dig into. And figure out kind of how that's being done kind of thing. There's some other really good ones in here. Curve space is great, which is why I've got a heart on it.
Okay, this is another one I really like because it's another one of those ones that I would then apply my own go-tos immediately to it. So let's give this uh, Ixian, I don't know, uh, IXIAN device a listen. So obviously we have some pitch happening. We have a low pass filter uh, in the feedback loop. No dynamics. So let's try let's try messing with that. Let's take the dynamics, add that swell pre. Oh, so then, actually, let's do this. Let's do diffusion post and see what that does for that. Let's give us some reverb. Yeah, there's some really cool stuff that happens in a lot of these. There's also some really wild stuff that like, bizarre stuff like. Which is basically taking that envelope and applying it to a pitch shifter. There's so much interesting stuff in here. It's one of those things that's just worth exploring. It is no secret that to me, the most impressive stuff, the, the kind of best case scenario, my favorite use cases in this thing are without question, the kind of more ambient soundscapey exploratory uh, sides of this pedal. So with that in mind, let's spin up a loop on this thing and kind of play with some interesting stuff. Uh, the way we have our looper set up right now is at the end of our chain, uh, record an overdub, play stop, and then effect one is going to be a re-trigger, and effects two is going to be octave down and reverse, I believe. Let's take a look and confirm really quick. Where's our looper? Here we go, looper. Uh, half speed and reverse, exactly. Great. So, uh, play and overdub, play and stop, or record overdub, play stop, uh, re-trigger, which by the way, can be used while overdubbing, which can create some interesting glitchy stuff that we will make use of. 
And then our effects loop, uh, or our, our effect, uh, loop effect number two is going to be that octave down thing. So we're going to start with this sound. Mm -hmm. 